Formula One's 2020 season comes to an end this weekend in Abu Dhabi, with the entire paddock entering an unprecedented biosphere lockdown. For everyone in Grand Prix racing, these will be the strictest COVID-19 rules encountered so far this year. In fact, the measures are so strict, they've been a factor in weighing up Lewis Hamilton's participation in the final F1 round of the season. For even if he's declared fully fit in Bahrain and receives his negative test results in time, travel restrictions are so tight, plus there's a minimum 48 hours of isolation required for anyone arriving late in Abu Dhabi that the logistics remain complicated. Access by road to Abu Dhabi is currently blocked from its UAE neighbour Dubai, and special exemptions have been made to allow the Grand Prix to go ahead following months of discussions between F1 and the authorities. The area around the circuit and the adjacent hotels have been closed off, with entry for F1 personnel only being allowed on the Monday after the Sakhir Grand Prix. After entry, the biosphere is sealed off. If you want to leave, you are free to do so, but you cannot return again before the end of the post-season Abu Dhabi Young Driver Test. The only vehicles and personnel allowed in and out are those with specially arranged government passes. Preparations for the biosphere process began in Bahrain, where all F1 entrants had to take a locally mandated COVID test at the airport on arrival. They then had to isolate in their hotels until they received a negative result via a government app on their phone. Regular testing has taken place since. The rivals in Abu Dhabi have had to spend at least a week in Bahrain under the COVID testing regime, so anyone who skipped the first Bahrain Grand Prix, such as Ferrari boss Mattia Bonotto, had to travel out for the second race in order to guarantee their presence at the season finale. The only alternative option would be the mandatory 48-hour quarantine for anyone travelling directly from Europe to Abu Dhabi. To ensure a controlled arrival of F1 personnel, the sport's official travel division worked with Abu Dhabi GP race sponsor Etihad to arrange 10 charter flights, 9 Airbus A320-321s and a Boeing 787, which left Bahrain every hour from 10am on Monday, carrying a total of 1,248 people. Social distancing rules meant that not every seat was occupied, while teams and staff from different bubbles had to be carefully split up. The only travel exemptions are for those on private jets. They have also had to travel on Monday and ensure they too had a negative test certificate with them. After arriving in Abu Dhabi, F1 staff have been transferred to the hotels around the track, entering the biosphere that they cannot leave until after the race. Everyone had to isolate in their rooms on Yas Island on Monday evening while awaiting their test results. Once those negative test results were back, F1 personnel were finally allowed outside of their room and special wristbands have been handed out to those who are confirmed as being free of the virus but the only access that they will be allowed this weekend is to the hotel complex near the track and the circuit itself, and personnel will walk between the two via a specially sealed off route. One man who is experiencing the biosphere firsthand is Autosport's Grand Prix editor Alex Kalinorkas, who flew in from Bahrain early this week and is joining us from Abu Dhabi. You've been to a fair few races this year. How, how different have you found the experience in Abu Dhabi so far? Well, on the one hand, it's not that different in the, uh, you come to an airport, you come to a hotel, you're getting ready to, to, to you know, to, for, the, for the race weekend coming up. But the difference here is that we can't leave certain areas of Yas Island, like really, really specific areas. I'm sure you guys uh, will have seen uh, the map. There's like uh, certain red zones. Normally that means you can't go in those zones in terms of a motorsport context. But in, in, this, in th this weekend, you can only go in those zones. So basically it's the hotels where everybody is staying. Uh, then there's a little uh, a road route um, which is which is closed to most vehicles, which everyone's going to walk into the track to the other hotel, the W Hotel, the famous one in the middle of uh, the Yas Marina track, and then the paddock and the track itself. Um, but we only we, we can only go there if we've tested negative, um, which uh, which wasn't a guarantee. Everybody had uh, tests on arrival, got off the plane before you went through passport control, before we went uh, to collect our luggage, uh, which was uh, then sprayed when we arrived at the hotel. And everybody had to stay in their rooms until 8 a.m. this morning, when uh, there was like a little QR code on the back of your passport stuck there so you could just scan it and see if your test, when, when your test result arrived. Thankfully, it came back negative and I've got the, uh, the all clear via this green wristband. So what does the wristband do then? So basically, I can go anywhere in a very, very small area of Abu Dhabi, which is that red area that I mentioned. So all the hotels and the restaurants, um, you know, go down to sit by the swimming pool. Although I have been diligently writing my column for autosport.com plus and autosport magazine today. Um, and then to the track, it would just get us basically in that little bio zone. Uh, actually, I mean, you guys won't be able to see because of the way that uh, you've got to get the camera set up with the lighting. But behind my laptop, I've got a lovely view uh, of, uh, of the track. I can see down to the second big stop at the end of the second, you know, the curved uh, straight as it were um and basically there's a there's a there's a barricade in place i think i i, 
I, I filmed a little bit of it, which hopefully will be included in this video. And there's a there's a great big wall that's 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 presumably hiding a bit of a building site that's going to be built next to my hotel. And beyond that, you'll be able to see this barricade, which has got uh, police cars on it. No one can get in or out until uh, until the event is over. And I think, as far as I'm aware, that includes the uh, the young driver test as well. Obviously, if you, if you want to fly home after the Grand Prix, which I'll be doing next Monday, you can, but you can't do anything else. It's straight to the airport and out of the country. If you want to go anywhere else in Abu Dhabi, it's a 14 day quarantine period. It's been a year of crazy restrictions um, to get, get Formula One on the road. We've all experienced multiple tests and um, limited travel. Does it feel weird still as we head to the final race now? Or are now you pretty used to it? I'm used to the the testing. That's that's fine. Um, it, that's, that's certainly, I think the the Italian test for the Italian races rank among the most unpleasant. But it's just a necessary uh, thing we have got to do to get this season underway. What I'm still not used to is the lack of uh, access for the media in terms of going into the paddock. I think it's totally understandable that you know teams don't want just anybody wanting want, wandering into their motorhomes. But just it certainly is really rammed home in Bahrain where the media center has a view looking into the paddock with sort of bars across the window just 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 as it's as it's designed very very nice uh, very nice design there but you couldn't you couldn't physically go into it and that still feels a little bit it's a little bit frustrating understandable but you know it's just it's just one of those things that, that we've got to but in terms of the the restrictions the not necessarily going out and enjoying the lovely sights that we get to see yeah i've got used to that and uh yeah, it's, it's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm more than surviving. It's a, it's a difficult situation. I think everybody's just making the best of it. The biosphere is the, the strictest conditions I think anyone in F1's lived under this season. How do you think F1 personnel are going to cope with this at the end of a, a three-week trip as well? Well, I mean, I think to a certain extent, it sort of depends what helps you relax and be best at ease. If for some people on their day off, that is would be going out to enjoy downtown Abu Dhabi or the tourist sites, then unfortunately, they're not going to be able to do that. But as long as, you know, you can just be happy with relaxing in a, in a slightly confined space, this hotel room is lovely. I'm, you know, I'm fine. There's, you know, I'm, th th there's much worse ways that you'd have to spend a few days ahead of a race event. But it's, you know, it's just a short amount of time. The race event will take up most of your most of the time spent in Abu Dhabi, and, and you're working. As we know, we're working ridiculous hours. The same with uh, the teams as well. So, it's just it's just a case of, of 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 getting by, really. But you can understand some frustrations. But I think when you consider what a difficult situation it is for so many industries, so many sports, I think people are really understanding and really coping. Yeah, back in May, June time, I think a lot of us doubted if F1 would even get one race done this season. It seemed very doubtful. But reflecting on the fact that F1 managed to pull off a 17 race calendar. How impressed are you by the job that F1 and the FIA did? Oh, massively, massively. And they deserve full credit for that. I think, you know, there was, it's, it's the dealing with governments and the, you know, the guarantees that the, that the F1 show arriving in town is not going to lead to massive spikes in infection rates and things like that. They've really done a good job of, of just, just being able to, being able to make that happen. You know, there have been positive tests. Uh, the show has gone on. It's not, as far as I'm aware at this stage, I'm sure there'll be lots of data published afterwards showing the impact of when F1 came into the various towns that it visited. But in terms of the the, 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 the sort of the bubble of the championship itself, it's run it's run very smoothly. Um, and yeah, I mean, like, like I said, the, the, the restrictions that, that are in place obviously are a down note, but I think everybody sensible is understanding of why. And as I said, you just, just get on and make the best of it. Thanks for joining us, Alex. And we're all looking forward to seeing the final F1 race of the season this weekend in Abu Dhabi. Did you think F1 would ever have been able to pull off a full race calendar this season? And what do you think will happen in 2021? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And don't forget to hit that like button. Thanks for joining us.